Advice to a student from a foreign country. My advice to a student from a foreign country would be to talk, talk, talk. Talk as much as you can to the people who live in the place that you are visiting. Talk to them and practice your new language skills. Learn all the funny sayings and different words that make up their language. Talking is the only way to really learn a language. Listen to people and talk to people. If you talk to people, you will also learn about their culture. I have a friend from Japan. His name is Nori. He often comes to see me just so that he can practice his English. He gets confused about words that sound the same but mean different things. He was asking me about the words see and see. I explained to him that they do sound the same, but they are spelled differently and they mean different things. Nori is learning some of our funny sayings from different people. One morning, I asked him how he was, and he said, "Alive and kicking." Another morning, when I asked him how he was, he said, "So so." He laughs about these strange sayings that we use. He is learning English quickly because he spends a lot of time with English-speaking people. He likes to have lunch with my friends and me because we ask him questions about his homeland, and he answers us in English. If he doesn't understand our questions, we spend time explaining what we mean to him. He says that he enjoys being here. He thinks that the people are very friendly. We enjoy speaking to him and helping him to learn English. We also enjoy learning about his country. It is enjoyable for us to meet new people and learn about new things. A ghost. One dark and gloomy night, I was sitting in my bedroom reading ghost stories. The stories were very scary. A storm was brewing outside my window. The wind began to howl, and the trees shook and bent in the wind. Lightning started to flash across the sky. I felt uneasy as I heard the low rumble of thunder. I glanced around my room. The shadows were deep and dark. The ghost stories were making my imagination play tricks on me. I thought that the shadows were moving. I looked under my bed to make sure that nothing was under there. I hid under the covers and peeked out. I was starting to hear things. A big streak of lightning flashed across the sky, and a loud clap of thunder made me jump. I was very nervous. All of a sudden, I heard a noise. It was coming from my closet. I thought that it must be a ghost. I looked out from under my covers and waited for the ghost to appear. My face was white and I was very, very scared. Then I heard the noise again. Yes, there was definitely a rustling in my closet. I stayed very still and did not make a sound. I watched the closet and hoped that the ghost would not come flying out at me. Something started to come out of the closet. I squeezed my eyes shut. I didn't dare look at the ghost. I heard it come out of the closet. I felt it jump up on my bed. I was still too scared to look. Then the ghost made a noise. It said, "Meow." I opened my eyes and saw my kitten standing there. It was my kitten that had made the rustling noises in the closet. I laughed and felt very foolish. I have decided not to read ghost stories on dark, stormy nights. I think my imagination plays tricks on me when I read ghost stories on nights like that. The middle child. I am the middle child of the family. I think it is nice in some ways. I have an older sister from whom I can borrow clothes from if she lets me. I get to meet my older sister's friends, although sometimes they think that I am too young to be with them. I have a younger brother; 
He is cute, but sometimes I have to babysit him. There are good things and bad things about being the middle child. My sister is the eldest child. She was the first child, so she spent time alone with my parents. She got lots of attention when she was first born. They took lots and lots of pictures of her. All her clothes and toys were brand new. I got her hand-me-downs. My parents were the strictest with her. They had lots of rules for her to follow. She is the first child, so they want her to be perfect. My younger brother is the baby of the family. I think that we all spoil him. We let him get away with some things that he shouldn't get away with. His room is always messy, and my mother never gets mad about that. She gets upset with me if my room is messy. She tells me that I'm old enough to keep a nice, clean room. It's no good thinking about which position you would like to hold in the family. You really don't have a choice about that. I think I like being the middle child. I can relate to my older sister and my younger brother. Yes, I think the middle is probably a good place to be. Elementary School. I go to Gainsborough Public Elementary School. I am in grade eight. I am known as the King Queen of the school this year. I feel very grown up. I love being the oldest kid in the school. My friends and I are told that we are examples to the younger kids in the school. That means we need to be good. I remember looking up to the grade eight kids when I was younger. I remember thinking how big and wise they seem to be. Now that I'm in grade eight, I hope that the younger kids see me as wise. I want to be a music teacher or maybe a nurse. My school counselor helps me plan for high school. I am nervous because I know I will not feel like the king any more. Things will be so different. I am excited because I will be meeting so many new people. I am looking forward to my graduation. I will wear a pink silky dress. My shoes are a light pink too. My date's name is Chad. He is very nice. He is a good friend. I have known Chad since I was a little girl. I know that my future will be a bright one. I will miss all of my friends, but I know we will see each other again some day. A rainy day. The clouds were very gray. There was a loud boom that came from the sky. A bolt of lightning struck down a tree. All of a sudden, buckets of rain came pouring down. Jane and Bill were walking in a park when the rain started. Jane wanted to take pictures of the flowers, but the rain got her camera wet. She had to put it away so that it wouldn't get ruined. Jane was going to hide under a big tree to stay dry, but Bill told her that was not a safe idea. He said that she could get hurt if the lightning hit the tree. The tree could break and fall on her, or the lightning could even hit her. The air was very chilly. Jane and Bill put on their sweaters and raincoats to keep warm. Jane took her umbrella out and put it up. They both walked under it to stay dry. The ground was really wet and muddy. Bill and Jane were very glad that they remembered to wear their boots. They ran through the puddles, getting mud and water all over the back of their pants. As they were running and having fun, they saw some ducks. There were five of them splashing around in a pond. The ducks were not afraid of water; they swim in the water all the time. Jane and Bill saw some big bullfrogs near the pond. The frogs jumped into the pond when they heard Jane and Bill coming. After a little while, Jane and Bill decided to go home. They got into some dry clothes. Jane started to sneeze. She had gotten a little bit too wet. Bill noticed that the rain had stopped. Look outside, Jane," he said. Jane wrapped a blanket around her shoulders and looked outside. There was a beautiful, bright rainbow across the sky: violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. 
The rainbow shone high in the sky. I wonder if there's a pot of gold on the other side, Jane asked. She had once been told that leprechauns lived on the other side, handing out money to those that made it to the rainbow's end. Bill didn't believe there was a pot of gold. Jane ignored Bill, though, and started off across the field to claim her big pot of money. Let's hope Jane finds her way back home safe and sound with a big pot of gold.